Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, can I start by congratulating the uh, honourable member for Hull West and Hessel for being able to uh, secure this debate? Um, although we went in front of the backbench committee together, the truth is she did most of the work, and uh, I'm hugely grateful for what she has has done in this space. And having set a very high bar for herself with the way in which she opened the Westminster Hall debate in October, I think I can safely say that for mesh injured women in Scotland, they will be incredibly grateful for the support that she has shown uh, them through her remarks uh, today. Um, in the past six months since we had that debate, there have been a number of very important developments, both internationally and domestically. Uh, there have been landmark announcements in Australia and New Zealand, as other honourable members uh, have mentioned. And whilst the UK Government has so far not chosen to take similar action here, I will certainly be continuing my efforts with the APPG to persuade them that banning MESH is the right thing to do, particularly now that NICE has issued guidance which favours an effective ban in practice. Uh, up in Scotland, in the Scottish Parliament, there was a public petitions committee debate in, uh, just before Christmas. And as I said out in the previous Westminster Hall debate, the Scottish mess survivors were left with very little option but to continue their fight through the public petitions committee up there, following a hugely disappointing report from an independent review group established by the Scottish Government. A further review exercise is currently progressing in Scotland. However, this will not re-evaluate the conclusions of the independent review. It will only assess the merits of the process by which those conclusions were reached, and so it does have the potential to undermine that flawed exercise even further. But at this stage, I would like to pay tribute uh, to the three amigos in the Scottish Parliament, my Conservative colleague Jackson Carlaw, Labour's Neil Finlay, and the SNP's Alec Neil, the former Cabinet Secretary for Health. All three immediately recognised there was a serious issue here and have to be investigated and continue to champion mesh injured women across Scotland, like my constituents Elaine Holmes and Lorna Farrell. One of the big difficulties with this issue has been very difficult to get media uptake on it, uh, particularly in Holyrood with the male dominated press lobby. They found it a bit icky, they didn't really want to write about it. And so I have to pay particular tribute to Marion Scott, uh, a journalist who has been absolutely dogged in her determination to highlight this issue, and also uh, the Honourable Member for Pontypri, who has gone out of his way to make sure that this issue gets pushed up within the media across the rest of the UK and giving it um, exposure that would have otherwise been, been very difficult to, to achieve. Now, in February, uh, the Secretary of State outlined a number of important measures to review MESH and to investigate what had gone wrong. Now, I think it is fair to say that, as an overall package, a lot of uh, the MESH campaign groups found it slightly underwhelming, um, but it is vital that uh, their input into the process is given utmost attention. And of course, this week we had the retrospective audit being published. Um, as has already been touched upon, it is absolutely right that the Health Minister, Lord O'Shaughnessy, has instructed the Chief Medical Officer in England to respond to the findings with some urgency following engagement with uh, the medical authorities, but particularly importantly with the patient groups representing women whose lives have been wrecked by MESH. Too often, when uh, there's been statements and guidance and responses, the, the views and the experiences of these real women has basically been completely ignored. Uh, they've been talked about as if they're not there. Uh, their uh, experiences have been undermined and dampened down. And so, it's really, really important that if patient groups are going to have any faith in what the UK government does from now on, that the patient voices are, are right front and centre uh, of that process. During his address to the Commons, uh, one thing I was particularly pleased to see the Secretary of State announce was the £1.1 million of funding to, uh, to set up a comprehensive MESH database. Uh, the establishment of a database is something that MESH injured women in Scotland um, have reacted very warmly to, and I think it is a very, very positive development. But they have been very, very clear that in order for the authorities to gain a true picture of the suffering that MESH can cause, it really does have to be accompanied by a requirement for mandatory reporting of all MESH procedures that have uh, been taken place. And crucially, as many others have said, that has to encompass not just procedures on the NHS, but private, um, because, as has been said before, many of the women who actually got these processes done did so privately. So if it is not already envisaged for mandatory reporting to be part of the database, then I really would urge that that is something that is explored by the Department. Um, it is also the case that setting up such a database in Scotland was one of the six points included in the petition brought to the Scottish Parliament by the Scottish Mesh Survivors in 2014 and in 2017. Um, I think it is fair to say that progress towards establishing that database has been pretty much um, pitiful. Um, and so it was really welcome that the Secretary of State made clear that he was very much open to a UK-wide database and working closely with the devolved administrations so that we could get a clear picture on a UK-wide basis. 
And so I was very pleased when myself and uh, my honourable friend, the MP for Angus, wrote to uh, the Scottish Government's Cabinet Secretary for Health and Sport that she confirmed that her officials have been liaising with colleagues at Westminster and the other devolved administrations over a UK-wide database. And perhaps in her remarks, the, the Minister could explain exactly how that process of communicating with the devolved administrations to get that UK-wide database, get the, that input from the devolved administrations, um, will proceed. So, Considering the failure um, in Scotland to progress a MESH database in the four years since the survivors' position was, petition was first brought to Holyrood, uh, Scottish involvement in a UK-wide database is... Yes, of course. I thank the honourable gentleman for giving way, but is he not aware that the discussion in Scotland was the fact that the database would need to be UK-wide? We have already said, we have talked about the EU registration. The bigger a population you have, the quicker you notice a problem. The MHRA is UK-wide. If you are talking about having small databases, this was not the Scottish Government obstructing it. The profession felt this needed to be UK-wide and needed to feed into the MHRA. I do agree that having a UK-wide database is going to be far more effective and far more beneficial in getting a true picture of the story for these MESH-injured women, but I do think that the Honourable Lady has to accept that for the MESH-injured women in Scotland, they have found the Scottish Government and particularly the current Cabinet Secretary's response to this issue to have been really quite poor. Um, I just wanted to, to, to finish off that, that saying that a lot has happened with MESH in the past six months, both at home and abroad. And some progress has been made, and important steps have been taken, but there is still much, much further to go. And, Mr. Deputy Speaker, you know, often as a, a member of Parliament, you are asked, "What is it that you want to achieve? What do you want to do in this place? What is the tangible thing that you want to be able to walk away from here and say that you have done?" And getting justice for mesh injured women is right up there at the top of the list. And I can simply say to those watching at home and those in the public gallery that the fight goes on. Yeah. Yeah.